Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Samak Valley. And we're going to be watching... I remember. Cybernetic Pony vs. Kronos. This is a game I was actually trying to cast yesterday, but my computer locked up randomly. It does that very rarely. I think it's related to the wireless card. I hadn't disabled that before starting the stream. We'll see if that's the case. But anyway, Timmy Yong, I apologize for that. Anyone who's watching the stream yesterday. So starting out Cybernetic Pony, CISO to the north. He is placing down a standard economic start, while Kronos to the south is playing Vekir, and he will be going up an economic start as well. I don't really want to fast forward this because, of course, people on YouTube will be seeing this for the first time, but uh, full disclosure, I have watched this match up to about the halfway mark before, so I have some idea of what happens in the early game. Granted, in Akron, it's not entirely surprising what's going to happen. Samak Valley isn't a huge map, so... Actually, kind of thing that I am trying to remember now. I think, well, it doesn't matter. Going about Samak Valley, this is a fairly small map that does have a decent amount of resources, especially over in the center, with a grand total of 12 users, well, 12 LC crates and 4 QP crates along both sides of the center. And the very center, there's 8 QP crates, though they are rather hard to hold. And both players have their Akrons going in towards north and south to scout, with special ops coming in as well. Just, you guys check out the center, make sure that's going on there from Cybernetic Pony. Oh wait, no, this special ops actually goes off and kills some resource crates, because that's what Cybernetic Pony does. Oh. Okay, I apologize. Apparently my microphone volume is low. This is... Is this better? Well, let me know if it's better, anyway. I'll try to speak louder. Anyway, with Cybernetic Pony getting himself going very quickly, getting more RPs, and Kronos has scattered what's going on. Now, if you notice, Kronos has some bookmarks set up here, which we'll be using to retreat his Akron later on. And also getting up a depot at the four, at the one, or sorry, an annex. That must be a mistake. He should be getting a depot there, because that's what you'd get. You wouldn't get two annexes next to each other. That'd be silly. Unless you're going for some really powerful, well, really committed early infantry strategy. It wouldn't be especially powerful. And here we go. Kronos is now undoing the Akron scout, while Cybernetic Pony was retreating his Akron rather than simply undoing the scout. He's moving it out of the way, but not going back to undo it before it even happens. Anyways, I was saying, Samak Valley is a small map, so aggressive strategies are going to be much better, though. Given the given the construction of the map, the rush distance is still not short, but this is a small map, so I expect aggression, I expect early attacks, I expect lots of damage being done. I don't expect much economy being built, at least not if the players are planning on winning, and one out, Kronos. Kronos, by the way, was formerly known as Chris Six Six Four Haworth. He has changed his name to Kronos. I'm still not entirely sure why, but that's his name now, apparently. It's worth knowing. With that out of the way, we see Saturday Pony really worried about the scouting, but not actually. He's paid attention to it as the time waves go along, but like I said, he wasn't actually sticking around to see what's going on. I said yesterday that this was the worst idea, but looking at it again, it looks like it might not have been terrible, because it does mean he was able to see what was going on on a few iterations, whereas Kronos only saw one iteration, and that was about it. Now, Cybernetic Pony continuing to build up more RPs, which is a little bit surprising on this map, given the size. Now, of course, Kronos is being much more... well, doing much more what I expect. Building up a depot and then building up some Zion pulses from there. The 230 mark, this is fairly early depot. Granted, he didn't build any QPRPs, which means he's going to have to teleport one of these over in order to build any vehicles. Or build more ones if he wants to, but I don't think he is aware of that. And he's pointing out he used to play one of RPs cost 50 LC, which was about three or four patches ago. And in that case, it would have been a lot easier for him to build up more RPs here. Granted, he has enough resources to build two RPs easily. But it looks like he's just waiting for his QP to build up a bunch of vehicles, probably a couple of Zion pulsers. And at the same time, we see that Cybernetic Pony was building up a factory. Cybernetic Pony, at the same time, is checking out this factory, making sure it's being built up, and it's working perfectly, while also getting Q-Plasma RPs, so probably going to be going for ATHCs and Lancers, especially if he's going for QPRP before the factory's even done. He's very likely going for Lancers, so he's going to need that to build any number of Lancers beyond one, but ATHCs, you can build a couple of them before you have to worry about spending money investing in QPRPs. And here we go, infantry going towards the right side of the map, going down south along the right side of the map, and that special ops actually never even attacked this crate. I guess Cybernetic Pony is saving that for later, because that's what Cybernetic Pony does. He likes to attack crates and prevent his opponents from expanding. 
Though he tends to do that further into the mid game, around the 10 minute mark or so, and his opponent's distracted. He actually has said as much himself, that's why he tries to do it then. Well, Chronos, on the other hand, probably won't be doing that. Most players don't destroy the crates. It's just not something people seem to think about. They are, they've been destructible forever. It's just, Cybernetic Pony is the first player I've seen use that as a key strategy in all of his games, or very many of his games. I don't think all of them, but definitely it's something he focuses on, something he does frequently. And Cybernetic Pony building up a Lancer. There we go. He had his HTC built up earlier, although I don't see it anywhere. Perhaps he has undid it, but he is definitely building a Lancer. No, never mind. It's right here. HTC going on the west side of the map, so Cybernetic Pony is making sure to cover both lanes here. With the Lancer possibly going down the center as well, just to make sure nothing is sneaking through there. Because the way Samic Valley is constructed, you have one lane along the east side and along the west side, and they connect to the center, but the center does not connect directly to the main bases. Those have to go to the west and east. And there's a nice little bridge across as well, but they go to the west and east. Whereas going through the west and east directly is the essentially the shortest path, really, when it comes to rushing. And Cyberpunk Pony is making sure that he's covering both angles there. While Cronus is not using either, though, given that he has teleporting Zion Pulsars, he's upgraded Skip Teleport on both of them, he could very easily go through the center directly by teleporting. He is, however, sending some Zion Veer up towards the west side of the map to meet up with the Special Ops and ATHC. And looks at Pony from his point of view, he was doing some damage here. Where is he doing the damage? Oh, he's just past the damage, actually. It looks like he was attacked here. This was a Zion Pulsar attack, actually. Kronos had set up his Zion Pulsars too far forward, and they got hit, but he's moved them back and not attacked with them. And here we go. Cybernetic Pony is now attacking all of these crates, destroying one of Kronos' expansions while keeping the other expansion locked down with an ADC and Special Ops. Granted, with the units that Kronos has, he could very easily undo that, or very easily get that out of the way. In both cases, actually. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't gone forward and tried to get rid of his inventory here. And there's another Lancer. This Lancer is definitely going to be able to deal with these Zion Pulsars once it comes down south, if it chooses to. Now, Cyberpunk Pony's point of view, the 620 mark, another factory being built. This is rather surprising. So he's Actually, no, it's not surprising. This is exactly what I expected. As mentioned before, with an early aggression strategy on a map like this is very much what I encourage. And a Magrafab being built up as well. Cyberpunk Pony getting very focused on military expenditure and also getting rid of the West Side Natural Expansion. And I think this is actually the point where the game crashed last time. So we're doing well! And that's another crate gone, so two crates gone on the east side, and one crate half dead on the west side. Now, Kronos, not actually dealing with this quite yet. He hasn't gone forward to attack it. Oh no, he has gone forward to attack the east side. Saving the east side crates, in fact. But the west side is still taking damage. Sending infantry as well to take care of the west side damage. The north side of pony building up his factories, and nothing being built up here, except for one Zion Tercher, that is new. One Zion Tercher has been built, and it looks like only one Zion Pulsar actually survived an attack here. So I'm guessing there that both Zion Pulses went over here and only one survived. Indeed, one Zion Veer coming back in, so one of the Zion Pulses was destroyed by the infantry. But the Zion Veer managed to get saved and is now the Zion Turcher. So that explains where that Zion Turcher came from. So that Zion Turcher was one of the Zion Pulses over in the east side of the map. And now it's the Zion Turcher going for a slight upgrade in its ride. So Cybernetic Pony not actually able to do any damage to these crates. Kronos fending him off both times. This is why, as mentioned before, Cybernetic Pony likes to wait until the mid-game before doing this, rather than the early game, since the early game, your opponent can just stop you really easily. They're not distracted at all. Now, conversely, Cybernetic Pony is in fact using one of his expansions on the west side of the map, while getting himself machinery. Not at all surprising, given how folks he's in the factories, and probably will be building some Tornads, possibly tanks. I don't know if he's going to be using the Macrofab Beyond Mar tanks, though. He is focusing quite a bit on heavy on air, actually. I, I almost wouldn't be surprised if he went for aerospace directly. He just went from machinery to aerospace, because aerospace allows for improved damage for lancers and for tornados. Though he's not actually building any tornados yet, but he does have quite a few lancers. And coming in here, we see that Cronus is going for proxy foundation. Is he just using that for healing, or is he actually going to build a depot off that? I don't know. And slightly earlier than that, about a minute down from there, he's attacking with Zion Pulses, but not is going to do much good, because there is... Like I said before, there are four Lancers, and those Lancers will just hard counter those Zion Pulsars. The Zion Tercher has a bit of a chance, but even then, its Cloak, which is pretty much its trump card, isn't going to be that useful. And it looks like... Wow, it looks like this iteration, there was a small change, and the Zion Pulsar never died, and thus never became a Zion Tercher. 
or sorry, it was never destroyed, so the Zion Beer never got to pilot a Zion Turcher. Which means the one thing that could have actually been of any use in the Zion line at this tech stage, the Zion Halcyons can attack air as well, and they're actually pretty good at it. But Zion Pulsars cannot, and Halcyon class has not been researched, so there is nothing right now that Kronos has that is particularly effective at fighting air other than Teth Veer right here. That's the only thing he has that's going to be at all effective at fighting Lancers, and it won't last long enough on his own. He need to have a few of those. Possibly get some Teth Churchers, or at least Teth Pulsars. He doesn't have the air, the aerial control center quite yet. He can't build air units, but he does have a Teth Veer. He does have possibly a depot coming up here over on the west side of the map. And you can definitely get Teth Pulsars up, and those would be quite effective against the Lancers. Assuming the Lancers go and die. That's the one thing about it. They'd have to actually go and die. They'd have to actually get into combat, and that's very risky. For air units, they tend to not get into combat unless they must, and they only get into combat if they can win, if they're played well, because air units have such high mobility that there's really no reason for them to avoid... I mean, you can just go five seconds down from the battle and move them out of the way, and they will avoid combat damage entirely. That's how powerful air's mobility is. But it looks like Cybernetic Pony is not even bothering to attack, which is probably fine. Not sure if he's aware of this proxy, though. He does have a frigate going towards the south, getting some more scouting information. You'll probably be able to figure out from there that something is up with Kronos, that Kronos is not playing the way he'd expect. And actually, Special Ops... Never mind, Special Ops did find out what's going on considerably earlier, getting killed by a Zion Pulsar half a minute down before it actually came in, but... Well, before we saw it with Cybernetic Pony's point of view. But it still gets the information it needs, which is that Kronos is not building inside his main base. And presumably he is building somewhere, which means that Cybernetic Pony should start getting suspicious about what's going on. In the meantime, he is building towards his East Natural Expansion, getting even more Lancers. Not a bad idea, though at this point I'm not sure he might be over-specializing. And Granny is getting upgraded as well. Martank has been built, another Martank coming up. Twin Mars will be here shortly. Very powerful artillery, and will be effective getting rid of the infantry here. I guess the Zion Bulsers, they are quite good, though they... I don't believe... I don't believe they're cost-effective. No, they actually are cost-effective. The air units are pretty much the only way around this. But air units will be built. Aerial Control Center being built up for Kronos at the 10-minute mark. Rather late. And the proxy has been discovered. Lancer finding it in a scouting run. Getting shot down. The units being healed by foundations. Very effective there, so no way the Lancer can actually deal with that on its own. Cybernetic Pony has jumped back and sending all of his Lancers to the 10-minute mark to attack this expansion. And the units, the Veer units getting quite a ways away from the foundations. Not able to do too much. Or foundation. Not able to do enough to get rid of anything here. And... Kronos has lost this proxy, although Kronos is jumping back a bit further and unable to re-micro, not quite far back enough to get his units far back to get healed up by the foundation. Is that proxy going down? Both players unable to deal any real damage to each other, though that proxy is probably a distraction just to get this aerial control center up. At this point, I'm expecting Teth Pulsars to be built up, possibly Shin Turchers. Oh, Shin Pulsars. Well, that's new. No one ever builds Shin Pulsars. I'm glad to see them. They are not bad. They're kind of a generalist unit. Something of the same vein as Lancers, actually. High mobility and fairly generalist, but people tend not to build them. They tend to prefer building Shin Turchers instead. Well, Shin Turchers and Teth Turchers instead. Just because they're generally more powerful, and Shin Pulsers aren't that much cheaper. Though, Shin Pulsers are a bit cheaper, as you can see here. Quite a bit cheaper in, in Q Plasma compared to the Shin Turcher, and quite a bit cheaper in Liquid Crystal. But half the cost of Liquid Crystal compared to the Teth Turcher, and about half the cost in Q Plasma compared to the Shin Turcher. Which is good to know. And Teth Pulsar as well being built up, so Kronos trying to cover all his bases here, and I'm not sure if it's going to matter though, Kronos is not building up this stuff early enough, Summoning Pony has come back to the 1123 mark, and Pillow past Edge, and is dealing quite a bit of damage, Shin Pulsar doing what it can, and able to deal quite a bit of damage, healing with, by the foundations being effective, but not as effective as I'm sure he would like it to be. Kronos has jumped back to the beginning of the battle, 1115 mark, and that's... Probably still not going to be enough. The Zion Pulsar doing what it can, trying to get rid of the ATHC, but not quite able to do so. Shin Pulsar far back enough, though. It's able to deal quite a bit of damage, getting rid of one of the Lancers, and the Teth Pulsar helping out as well. So between the two of them, all the Lancers will go down. And the Shin Pulsar stays alive in the process, though. Not quite getting healed up. No, it is getting healed up fast enough. Able to get rid of everything, just barely staying alive and healing up completely afterwards. And finally getting a skip teleport as well. And this skip teleport was actually a previous order, I think. So that was kind of risky. But the lands are coming in, taking advantage of this time the skip teleport is being researched. However, it's taking quite a bit of damage from the buildings. And the Teth Pulse are able to finish it off with a Twin Mar coming in. However, from the east side of the map. And this Twin Mar not actually dealing damage. But Cybernetic Pony has jumped back. 
in order for it to start dealing damage, so it's likely to be remicroed at this point, not in a move command, but on an attack command. However, that depends if Saturday Point is paying attention, and he is not. He needs to go for an attack command. Why is this not an attack? Why is this on move? Right click is not an effective way of getting your units around in Akron. You really want to use a move. There we go. Now he's going for an attack move. You see the attack icon is highlighted. That is the one he's going for, and it will be able to deal quite a bit of damage to that depot, especially the Lancer as a spotter. Or, well, for one shot. However, Twin Mars still have pretty high sight and definitely very high range. That depot is taking quite a lot of damage. And Zion Pulsar going down in three shots. The other Zion Pulsar, however, in position to take care of it. And the Shin Pulsar is really the trump card here. That's the thing that's going to be able to get rid of this Twin Mar, if anything, will. This Twin Mar is able to get rid of the infantry without too much problem. Two-shotting every infantry unit that comes in. But the Shin Pulsar... No, even the Shin Pulsar, the Twin Mar, like I said... Unlike the Mar, Twin Mar can hit air, but it's pretty weak against it. However, the Shin Pulsar, not especially strong against ground, just moderately strong against everything, and Twin Mar has tons of health. So overall, the Shin Pulsar is really just outclassed. I'm quite surprised that Cyber that Cronus has not built any other areas, any Shin Churches or anything. He really hasn't built a lot of economy overall. I mean, we're well past the stage where it doesn't matter. At this point, Cyber Pony has gone for economy, so the only way to match up for that is to go economy as well, and Cyber Pony is definitely very ahead in economy. I think Cyber Pony will have this game because of that, if anything. And if nothing else, the economy is going to do it for him. And a Tornod as well, so Cyber Pony is definitely very well prepared. Four Mar tanks, a Twin Mar, possibly another Twin Mar. No, this Twin Mar looks like it's probably dead. But, or not even dead, it's... has it been undone? No, it looks like it probably did ultimately die. But it doesn't matter because... No, it ultimately retreated. Getting out of the way with 88 health, but able to survive. No Blackbirds coming up, however, or MFBs, so nothing to heal up that Twinmar. Just gonna be damaged and hanging out in the main base, doing nothing, being kinda useless. Not that it should really matter, though, because what matters ultimately is that... Cybernetic Pony is way ahead in economy, and getting Gate Tech, even! Well, this is... I think Cronus basically... his fate is sealed at this point. I mean, Cybernetic Pony has researched Gate Tech. Probably nothing's gonna stop him in the next two or three minutes, which means he can just get whatever units he wants, Chronoport back to now, or possibly even a bit sooner, when he gets a gate done, and that'll be game. Unplayable pass attack with all these units that he has, that'll that'll seal it. So just waiting for that to happen, really, and it looks like Cybernetic Pony might not just be left alone. Chronos looks like he's not just letting that happen, or at least he's moving out slightly, but he doesn't seem to be going for a full a harassment assault. No real serious assault could be done at this point, but definitely a harassment could be done. Something just to take out some of these, well, the QPRPs really are the big ones. Cybernetic Pony right now doesn't have enough Q Plasma to actually do anything useful Chronoport-wise. But he could easily get it. This expansion, taking care of the two RPs here, would be very effective. These RPs, however, are well protected by the Twin Mars, so taking those out is going to be impossible. And it looks like Cybernetic Pony is not what we're looking at right now. We're looking at Chronos. Chronos is looking at the damage that was being dealt by the Twin Mars, noticing his retreat. But I don't think he's aware of the gate tech being researched. And 1553 mark, Cybernetic Pony has gate tech. He does not have anything built with gate tech. He doesn't have any units built in. And he is getting more Q Plasma at the center expansion that I mentioned earlier that is fairly hard to hold, though I think at this point, Cybernetic Pony should have no problem doing so. More mechs coming up. I expect Chronoport. I expect the Chronoport gate to be built any time now. Actually, I'm a little bit surprised it hasn't been built earlier. Or. Okay, he's getting specials, which means he might be planning on going... There's the Chrono Porter. But I'm actually thinking he might, instead of going for Chrono Portation, might be planning on going for Temporal Salt and Shield. That's essentially... Since we never see it, I might as well explain it. It's an invulnerability shield. If you have the Chrono Porter and you have specials, it can use it. It's a, a small fee in Q-Plasma. I think it's 34 Q-Plasma and a little over half the energy of the Chrono Porter. So the Chrono Porter can do it about twice before it has to recharge fully, and it can't do it quite twice in a row. But still, getting two of these Twin Mars invulnerable, even with the Shin Pulsar in place, the Shin Pulsar is the actual is actually the shield breaker for Vekir. So this is probably one of the worst strategies that could be done, in all honesty. It just given that there is the shield breaker right there, that is one of the big things that Shin Pulsars do, and it doesn't really come up because TSS never comes up. But it looks like Cybernetic Pony might be going for that. It's hard to say. He does have the ability to do it. And he has no other units that use specials, so that's really the only likely the only likely cases that he's going to be going for the TSS. And once he does that, well, that won't last long. That'll be kind of a waste of Q-Plasma. 
With that Shin Pulsar there, it'll just take care of everything. Actually, sorry, let me just double check. The Shin Pulsar, I believe, takes all of its energy to do that. Yes, it does, so it will be able to take care of one of the units. It'll probably die before the second unit is de-shielded, but on the other hand, if it's right there... Oh, and there we go! Actually, a small assault force being sent out by Kronos at the 1744 mark towards the expansion here at the east side of the map, but not towards it. Actually, no, towards the main base. See what's going on. Last Ditch Assault, not a bad idea, but won't be especially effective, and I think the Temporal Assault and Shield will be used fairly soon. Cybernetic Pony checking with the attack. Seeing it's attacking the expansion, I don't think you've seen it was attacking the main base. Moving his units out of the way, but from Kronos' point of view, it might matter. No, Kronos is going towards the west side this time, changing up the attack. Instead of the east side going over the west side, but the west side is protected by turrets. This will be less effective at defense than the Twin Mars, but the Twin Mars are right there, so there's really nothing that Cybernetic Pony has to worry about. And Cybernetic Pony is about 10 seconds up from there. Trying to get rid of what he thinks is the assault, but really the assault's coming from the west side. Able to take out one of the mechs. Possibly able to take out this... Oh, but the Shin Pulsar has been lost. And at this point, Cybernetic Pony is moving out. He's was trying to go for that defense. And actually, the defense is possibly to lose his main base. Not a bad echo attack. It's quite an effective echo attack by, by Kronos, but not getting the real target, the Chrono Porter Gate. He does see that it's there, but he's not attacking it. And he's pretty much lost all the units he has built up thus far. Not sure if he's going to go for an extra attack. He's going to re-micro this to try to go for that Chrono Porter Gate, but it looks like he is not doing that at all. Not changing anything to do with this assault. Not that it would matter. The Twin Mar just takes care of everything way too quickly. If he sends in another force now, he might have a chance, but even then, it looks like Cybernetic Pony is just going for broke and trying to finish the game with a simple attack. Not going for Chrono Porting or anything. Just a straight attack. And that will do it. I mean, really, it, there's nothing else that can be done here. Cybernetic Pony is getting weapons. Not sure to what effect. He might be trying to get an Inceptor. I would be surprised. He doesn't have the money for it, by the way. He does have a foundation, but he doesn't have the cost. He doesn't have the cash for it. And against the number of units that are being sent out here, a single Inceptor will not be enough. Not that we ever see them anyway, but he is getting some Zion Pulsers. He probably will be trying to teleport in to get rid of this Chrono Porter Gate, which Cybernetic Pony, like I said, has not yet used. He looks like he's trying to... He's planning impossible using it for the Heavy Cruiser. He hasn't used it, though. He hasn't used Temporal Assault and Shield. But he has gone for just a straight-up attack with Twin Mars. Taking care of the Depot. Getting rid of the Aerial Control Center in a few shots. Getting rid of all these RPs here. I think this is going to be game. And a Heavy Cruiser coming from the north with the Temporal Assault and Shield. There we go. I knew it was going to be used at some point. So it can't be dealt any damage. And no Shin Pulsers are in play. I don't know if Kronos is aware that Shin Pulsers are the unit to get rid of that shield. Because he lost it before he was able to find out from experimentation. And, like I said, Cybernetic Pony really just using that Chrono Porter Gate for Temporal Assault and Shield. Another shielded Heavy Cruiser coming down, or coming south, I should say. And the rest of the army coming in from the southwest, or southeast, is coming southwest, I should say. They are going southwest in the current position into Kronos' base, and we'll be finishing that off in no time. So I think Kronos will be throwing in the towel any second now. All the units in place. The only thing that's stopping him really is himself. The units are in the base, and that's it. Kronos surrenders... And that is the game actually losing his Akron in the process. As far as I mentioned, this is Assassin mode, but both players, after that first bit in the Akron, was... They weren't really using their Akrons at all. And that is game! So I hope you enjoyed that, and that'll be it for me tonight. So have a good night, everybody.